everyone. Today's topic is human reproduction. Reproduction is a biological process in which the parents give birth to the young ones which are of the similar kind. So in reproduction, there are two modes of reproduction. The first one is called as the sexual reproduction and the second one is called as asexual reproduction. Generally, the animals exhibit both the types of the reproduction where the nature favors sexual reproduction more rather than asexual reproduction. Why is it so? What is the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction, we commonly say it is a biparental process while asexual reproduction is uniparental process. In sexual reproduction, there is a fusion of the male and female gametes. As there is a fusion of the male and female gametes, it results into the shuffling of the chromosomes, thereby reshuffling of the genes, thereby resulting in the formation of variation. Variation results into speciation and speciation results into evolution. That is the reason the nature favors the sexual reproduction. While in case of a sexual reproduction, as it is uniparental, where a single parent is being involved, a sexual reproduction results into formation of the new individuals which are genetically and morphologically identical to each other. So they are said to be clones. Now, in case of the human reproduction, the reproduction in human reproduction, the humans generally are said to be viviparous. They exhibit sexual dimorphism and these are primates. So vivipari or viviparous. Viviparous means the animals which give birth to young ones. Primates. Primates are those set of the mammals which are different from the other mammals in having certain peculiar characters. So, so for example, certain characters are all the primates have a pair of mammary gland. All the primates have the first digit, what we call it as a thumb. So this is opposable. Apart from that, all the primates have the freely movable shoulder joint. So these are some of the characters of primates which make the humans, apes, monkeys, gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan to be different from other mammals. Sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism refers to identification of both males and females based on the external characters. So in case of the human reproduction, Human reproduction occurs in that of the reproductive system which is well developed. So reproductive system in humans consists of primary sex organs, secondary sex organs and accessory sex characters. In case of the primary sex organs, primary sex organs have two main functions. The primary being production of the gamete and secondary is secretion of hormones. So these are the two main functions of the primary sex organs. So these primary sex organs are the gonads and in case of both male and female the gonads differ in their size and in their shape. So gonads in case of males are said to be testes which are in a pair and these testes have their primary function that is production of the male gamut, sperm, secondary function that is secretion of hormones, hormones are secreted namely the androgens or testosterone thereafter is inhibin. Whereas in case of the female gonad which is called as ovary, ovary has the primary function that is production of the ova that is a female gamut and secretion of the hormones such as estrogen, progesterone, inhibin and actin. So here estrogen which generally refers to group of female hormones which means it includes estriol, estrone and 17 beta estradiol. So these are the gonads which are the primary sex organs. 
seen in the reproductive system. Secondary sex organs neither they produce the gametes nor they secrete any hormones. Then what is the use of the secondary sex organs? Secondary sex organs generally are involved in the conduction of the gametes or it may be the secretion of sorry uh, nourishment of the gametes. So secondary sex organs are being classified into the accessory glands and the accessory ducts. So accessory glands if you look after in case of male reproductive system we find a pair of seminal vesicles, a, pair, a single prostate gland and a pair of Cowper's gland or bulbo urethral gland and the secretion of all the three glands together is what we call the semen. Whereas in case of the female reproductive system, the glands which are being present, they are called as the greater vestibular glands or Bartholin's glands and lesser vestibular glands or Skinny's glands. So these glands generally are being not necessary, which are not being involved in the nourishment of the gamut, but these secrete a secretion which helps in the lubrication process during the copulation. Thereafter is the accessory ducts. So in case of the accessory ducts, male, male reproductive system consists of the rated testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens. So these are four ducts which are the accessory ducts helps in the conduction of the male gamut that is sperm. Meanwhile, in case of the female reproductive system, the ducts are the OV duct mainly uterus, cervix and vagina so which helps in the conduction of the female gamut that is the ova. Next is the accessory sex characters. So as I said that humans exhibit sexual dimorphism, we can differentiate the male and female based on these accessory sex characters. So what are those accessory sex characters? So that we will discuss now. So, accessory sex characters in case of the both male and females, so they are for example the first one is facial hair. So facial hair are being well developed in case of the males and less developed in case of the females. That is as soon as the individual attains puberty or maturity under the influence of the hormones the facial hairs are being well developed in case of the males. For example, moustache as well as beard. Next accessory sex character is larynx. Larynx is well developed in males and poorly developed, poorly developed in case of the females. Next character is the mammary gland. Mammary gland are being commonly seen in both males as well as female. But the thing is, in case of males, males mammary gland are generally said to be vestigial or non-functional. So in case of male, we will not, we will not call that as a mammary gland, but we generally call it as chest whereas in case of females the mammary gland are well developed and this mammary gland are being responsible for the secretion of the secretion that is milk and that milk is necessary for the nourishment of the young ones. Next character is the pectoral girdle. Pectoral girdle in case of the males is broader and narrow in case of the females. Next is 
pelvic girdle so pectoral girdle generally we can call it as a shoulder and pelvic girdle generally we can call it as a hip so pelvic girdle is narrow in case of the males and broader in case of the females so next one is deposition of the subcutaneous fat next character deposition of subcutaneous fat so fat is less accumulated in case of the males whereas more accumulated in case of the females so these are some of the accessory sex characters by which we can differentiate male and females thank you